Experts are calling this the perfect storm for the demise of brick and mortar retail. Dozens of stores have declared bankruptcy during the pandemic, but empty storefronts at the Walden Galleria could have a much larger impact. Tonight, Nikki Dementry goes in depth at the future of how we shop. 31 years ago. Elegance is the word for the evening to match the ambiance of the mall. Western New York's gem of the retail world opened its doors. I've already got my credit cards for Baden with Teller and I was looking in the window. The Walden Galleria instantly brought hundreds of jobs to Chictawaga and decades later it continues to generate millions in sales and property taxes thanks to shoppers from across Western New York and Canada. Our main property in town. But now it's nowhere near what it used to be. A giant store closing banner hangs outside one of the Galleria's anchor tenants, Lord and Taylor. Just a few weeks after the retailer declared bankruptcy, the Galleria was home to another longtime anchor tenant, Sears, which now sits mostly empty on the other end. Last year we had about 10,000 store closings. Uh, we're already there this year. We're looking at about 25,000 store closings by the end of 2020 with about 50%. Uh, being in malls. It's a trend seen almost weekly during the pandemic with household name retailers grabbing similar headlines. While the birth of online shopping decimated retailers years ago, now retail expert Charles Lindsay says the pandemic just accelerated the inevitable of a second wave. Absolutely. But aside from the rise of online shopping, Lindsay says there are three other factors at play for Western New York. First, overbuilding when it comes to other malls in the area, like McKinley Boulevard and Eastern Hills. Next, it's a shrinking middle class. And last, a generational shift from baby boomers to Gen Z. A lot of people, they only think about the, the, the various stores that are closing, and then the second level of analysis would be, the, of course, the, the workers and their families. But there's a third level of analysis. It's a multiplier effect. It affects the communities greatly. And that's potential loss of sales and property tax that worries Chictawaga Town Supervisor Diane Benchkowski. We are going to be in a very, very tight situation. A total of more than $9 million between town and county property taxes and school taxes came from the Galleria in 2020. Chictawaga's cut flows into the town's general fund, which covers everyday operational costs from trash pickup to youth and recreational services. Maybe do more with less or do less with more. I, I, I you know, we need to figure out a way to cut spending so that we are not going to be relying on the residents. Taxes aside, what makes Western New York's retail landscape unique are Canadian shoppers. Last year, Lindsay says those Ontario plates brought in $50 million through shopping at the Galleria. Now, Ontario plates in the parking lot are not just an endangered species. They're extinct. If it goes into the fourth quarter, that is just really, really going to be devastating to uh, local Western New York retailers. Even if the border opens, Lindsay says he's not convinced Canadians will come back. Benchkowski disagrees, pointing to loyal mall walkers and shoppers. For now, we're OK. I'm just not sure about the future. Lindsay believes flagship malls like the Galleria will be able to brave the storm. Regional malls, though, could be a different story. They say what comes around goes around. In, in many ways, we're going back to the old Main Street model. What's your message to residents as we sit here right now in August about the Walden Gallery? We got to be positive and work with the Pyramid Company to figure out a multi-use project and uh, bring, bring it back and keep it thriving. We don't want to lose them because they do help pay our taxes. Nikki Dementry, 7 Eyewitness News.